All right, good afternoon, guys. This is Lefnin again. I am going through and giving you another video. This video, we're going to be concentrating on what exactly is it that you need in order to like progress in the form of resources. So resources is something that most people think, oh, I just need more, I need more, I need more, and you got to get it immediately. You do not need to do that necessarily. Resources are something that you build throughout the game. Now, your goal as you are moving along the different levels is to build the amount of resources that you have. Always have it to where you're increasing. You should never have it to where you're going down to where you're almost completely out. Now, I'm going to show you what I've done and then also what I think yeah, is a good way to basically approach it going forward. So here is the resources sales. First, when you pop up and everything, that's the first thing that you see. Now, if you look at these sales individually, one of the biggest things that you always need is gold. Now, you, they're going to give you every single day at least one free package or sale that is free. Now, granted, they're not it's not a huge amount of stuff, but it still helps you be viable in the game. Hold on a second. I absolutely hate the fact that I love the toggle. So... With your resources, right, silver is a big one as far as that you do need. Now, granted, if you're going through and you're gradually building and all, then you should be trying to mine for silver. You should be finding villages or creating villages. And we'll go into what exactly those look like and how you can mine them, how you can build them, everything else in a second. Gold is something that you're either going to get one of three ways. Either one, other people are going to buy packages. And as part of it, you're going to have, oh, actually four ways. As part of that package, they're going to have it to where the triumphal chess, you'll be getting some stuff that way. So it's not going to be the exact same amount that they get, but it's still going to be to where you get something out of it. And then you also have your speed up group, which is very important. And then you also have all these other things. And we're going to go list by list. So when you're looking at this first page of all the different resources, it's a lot. It's very confusing. It's like, what do I need? What do I not need? You know, what is this blue stuff in this vial and everything? We're going to get into that. So this the video will be completely about resources and having it to where you can find out what you need in order to progress. All right. With that being said, let's get out of this sale page. It's otherwise I'm going to get tempted. I'm like everybody else. Like when I've been in relationships, they were always like, you know, well, oh, if you, you know, we'll just go window shopping. We just, you know, I just want to look around. When was the last time that you heard somebody say, I just want to look around and then they bought stuff? Oh, wait, it's all the time. People go through and they, you know, naturally see something. And they're like, ooh, and then they go through and they buy it. And I'm the exact same, uh, same way. So the way I shop is I get in, get out, don't even have to worry about it. All right, so... First off, let's go to the area where you uh, keep all your resources. So down at the very bottom of your screen, we have it to where you have your different icons. If you're playing on the computer, it's at the bottom of your screen also. So either which one, you have all of your different stuff. Okay, so right now I'm going to click on this one. So this is items in the city. The very first thing is the speed ups. Now, if you're on their phone, it's the exact same thing to where speed ups will be the first column. And you can see exactly what you have. So right now I have a darn good bit of speed ups, but let me, you know, tell it to you quite honestly, these things will come and go quickly. Like I have 467 of one minute. That's nothing. That's like seven and a half hours. 15 minute one. Over a thousand, you know, the one hour one. I'm actually doing really well on speed ups right now because lately I've had a bunch of packages I had to buy in order to be able to accelerate my growth. And when you're competing with other people for accelerating of your growth, and like right now, because I'm worried about when the world, oh, when the kingdom opens up, like right now we have a baby kingdom to where, you know, outsiders can't get in or anything. They can't really talk to us or whatever. Now, granted, I'm still getting correspondence from other kingdoms that I think are starter kingdoms. And they're like, ooh, come and join us. And I'm like, eh, whatever. 
All right, so you can see that you have the different speed ups. And just a reminder, if it only has two arrows like this one, that means that it's for you personally. If you see it to where there is four arrows, that means that it's for the clan speed up. That means that it will help speed up any type of like research that they're doing in order for you to be able to get a part of it. These things are absolutely in, like, you know, imperative that you have them and you build them. 30 days speed up. So here's the way I speed up my processes. Anytime that I ever have anything going on in this game, I always go through and I start with the, th uh, with the lower ones. Now, most people, they'd be like, oh, you start high and then you work your way towards the low. Let me show you an example of this. So we're going to go through and we're going to speed up or basically upgrade one of our buildings. So I'm going to pick on this mansion again because I know that I want to get it up to level 24. So it needs 2 million lumber, 2 million iron, and 2 million stone. Got it. Cool. Now, very first thing, hit the help button. This way your clan mates can go through and help you out. And then we're going to speed this up. I'm going to ignore having the clan help me, and I'm just going to do it myself. So I can go through, and you like if you're good at math, then this is going to be easy. If you're bad at math, then this is going to be something to where you just have to slowly progress with it. So I have five days and 13 hours. If I was to use the 15 minute ones for every single hour, you have four. Each day you have 24 hours. So that's 96 15 minute speed ups for one day. If I'm using the five days and some odd hours, 13 hours, and I'm trying to do the math behind it, I know that I'm gonna need probably a little bit less than 600 in order to get there. Now, if I have, what, 1,873, can I afford to lose 600? Absolutely. I like to keep my numbers, when it comes down to the speed-ups, somewhere around the four to 500 mark, and then gradually work your way up this way, and then gradually work your way back down this way. So you're basically trying to keep it to where everything's remaining even. It's a lot of times when you're speeding things up, you know, you're going to start with the big ticket items like, oh my gosh, I have 20 days. And I will alternate between I'm going to use my 8-hour ones or I'm going to use my 15-hour ones or I'll use my 1-day ones. I alternate around every single time. So I have right now a ton of my 1-hour and my 3-hours. So I'm just going to go through and just start clicking away at my 1-hour. Now this is good to do this when you have it to where nothing's really going on. Like right now this afternoon, the great hunt is going on. I've already gone through and done everything I can to help my clan on you know both my normal side and my Beowulf side. So I basically am good to go. So I'm just gonna use up my one hour ones and try and bleed that down. Now I get to a certain point and I'm like, hey, I still need to get rid of some of these 15 minute ones. And what is one good thing that you could really do is when you have the premium stuff. So the premium is this P over here. When you have that, right, and it's active, you are allowed to hit this button right up here. So see this double arrow right here? For each one, you can hit that, right? Now what it does is it will go through and bleed it to where you use as many of these as needed in order to make that timer go, go away. Now, what I like to do sometimes, because I don't like to waste extra speed ups, I will try and get this down towards one day, and I'll show you why. So it's at 23 hours and 58 minutes. If I used a 15 minute speed up and everything, it would be perfect. Now I'm at 22:34, so hitting that, I would waste about 10 minutes off of one of the uh, 15 minute speed ups. Now I'm at 22.11. I'm perfectly comfortable with that. It's only four minutes I end up wasting from the quarter hour mark. So I just hit it and it's done. So try and have it to where you don't have a huge amount of one speed up and not that many of the other ones. Okay, so let's see if like now for those of you that are wondering like, how do I know if the clan is doing something or whatever? So now granted, Still trying to figure this out perfectly. Okay, so these are all the different activities I have going on right now. If the clan was doing something, 
we would see somewhere around down here to where it would be showing like, you know, clan research, you know, or uh, stone cutting research or this or that, whatever kind of research. But right now in my taskbar, it has nothing. Granted, the phone part looks very similar, but it's on the left-hand side in the upper part. Just look for that little, you know, golden tab or whatever. And that basically lets you know where the status of your stuff is. So like I've said in the previous video, I like to gather resources. Now, this is something that not a lot of people do, but I do it religiously. And the reason why is because I do not like spending actual hard earned money on getting lumber, getting steel, getting, you know, or getting iron and getting stone. I think that's an absolute waste of money. What I'd rather do is have it to where my three captains are always constantly busy. No matter what, if your captains are idle, you're wasting your time. And it's going to make it to where the game is either longer for you in order to be able to speed up, or it's going to make it to where you are basically like having to pay money, actual money, in order to get the things that you should have gotten for free. So I'd much rather, you know, do the extra legwork, do the hard work, and get it to where, I mean, great, it's not hard. My captains are doing all the work, but... I could go through and have it to where I speed up my civilization. So let's say, for instance, right, I'm going to show you exactly what, you know, this means by gathering resources. For those of you that have never done this before, this will give you a good little education. In it. So I don't want to look at that. So I clicked on one of my captains that was out, and currently they're at a lumber mill or sawmill that is on my clan's land. And so the reason why you know it's one of my clan's ones is because it has a ridiculous amount of, you know, uh, lumber in it. 3.68 million, that is not normal. The computer auto-generates, which means that it creates it on its own, different resources throughout the entire map. Now, your clan and your individual players can create their own in order to go through and help the clan out. You have to use blueprints in order to do that. And I'll go through and show you how to do that in a second. So let's say, for instance, right, because my guys are right here, I'm going to click on it, and then I can see exactly how long it is until they're done. So I'm going to get basically out of the 3.68 million. Look at the, like, list right here. So it says collected, and then it's a running count as far as how much you've got. So let's say, for instance, that you don't need the whole amount. You got there, you got the resources, but you only in a certain amount. If I needed 320,000, then I would go through and wait like another minute or two. And then at this point, I could go through and recall my troops. So it just does recall army. Your captain and the troops will head back to your home city and they will bring with them the 320,000 or whatever it is that you need. Now for the time being, I don't really need it. But I'm going to show it to you guys either which way, just because of the fact that that's what we do. All right, so I'm going to have my army recalled. So you notice that I have store or, or whatever, and he's going through and he's marching his way on back. And it says that it's going to take him one minute and 35 seconds. Now, I am somewhat impatient. Plus, I don't think you guys want to sit here and watch a short, stumpy dwarf go through and walk his way on back. So I sped him up. Now it's only going to take him 17 seconds. So I'm going to show you exactly how to go through and capture a resource. Because this is there is a certain amount of guessing that goes on with it. I've been able to figure it out for my current troop level. Depending upon the troop level and the like, what their abilities are is how much they're going to be able to carry or whatever. So let's say, for instance, right, I'm looking for lumber. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to use the watchtower icon right here. I'm going to click on mines up here. And then I'm going to be looking for different things. So let's say, for instance, I, I want lumber. Right now it's just showing me like, you know, gold. I don't need gold. I need lumber. And I think by clicking that, I might have gone through and gotten rid of the lumber aspect. All right, so let's click back on that. So now the lumber is back in play, I think. Granted, like I said, I'm not used to playing on the computer. Yep, it's back in play. 
So I see 3.35 million. And whenever you're trying to get a resource, it's always big, or better to go big or go home. Like if you have it to where you're constantly trying to capture 100,000 in lumber or whatever, you're not ever going to get anywhere. You need to be aiming for 1 million and above. Anything less than that is a giant waste of your time. Okay, so then it takes you to the part of the map to where you're uh, basically going to be like looking at the individual item that you're looking for. So if I was like centered over here, it would have it to where it reorient my screen or put it where it's right here in the middle. So I'm gonna click on it and then it says capture. One thing that you need to do is make sure that whenever you're looking at something that you want, look and see whether or not it's in your clan's area or another clan's area. So if I'm going around and I'm trying to find like, you know, let's say another item or whatever, and I'm just looking around the map, looking around the map or whatever. This is another clan's area. You can see their line and everything. And if they have a resource inside of here, hold on, looking for one. I'm not going to freak them out and piss them off or anything, but you know, oh, here it is. Okay, right there. Here's the resource of theirs. Currently, it's uninhabited or whatever. Now, I could go through and capture it, but you're not allowed to. It's against the rules. But something like this, to where there's a sawmill that's sitting right outside of it, that I'm allowed to touch. But because of the fact that it's inside their border for this one, I'm not allowed to touch it because it belongs to the clan. It's part of the reason why the borders of a clan is something that's very important that you be able to find it immediately and not have it to where you, you know, piss anybody off. So I know that this is within my border clan. What I like to do is I like to usually go outside of my border clan. So I'm going to, in this case, go back to the watchtower. I'm going to find something else outside of it. The reason why I say go outside of it is because I like to leave the resources inside of the border area for the lower level players that can't really afford to go very far or they're worried about getting killed or something like that. So this one, whenever you see this symbol where it has like that person or whatever, that little people symbol, that means that's occupied. That means that you need to leave it alone. But then there is this resource right here, which is a quarry, and it has 2 million uh, stone, and it's free. It's, I, I can capture it. Now, one thing that you need to also do is whenever you're looking at an individual like, you know, place, look and see if there's any lines that are going around it or going towards it. Right now, this one has no lines that are going towards it, so it is safe for me to capture. Because if you go to capture one, and it already has a line going towards it, either you're getting there first, or they're getting there first, and then at that point, they're gonna end up attacking you, because you cannot stop your guys mid-march. Okay, so for level six guardsmen, I know that I need about 4,000 troops for two million. It's roughly about, I think it's 500 if I'm, if I'm doing, or it's about 5,000 per troop, if I'm doing the math correctly. Or no, I'm sorry, 500 per troop, my bad. 500 per troop. That would get it to where I collect all 2 million. Now for the lower levels, it might be a little bit less or whatever. Play with your amounts and then go through and look at it and be like, okay, so I know I'm level three. This has 1.2 million. If I had it to where it was like level six, then I'd be able to like be like, okay, I need 4,000 troops. But it might be to where you can oh, look at it later after you've already captured it and says, oh, you're only going to collect 900,000. Okay, that means that if I only sent 4,000 troops, it's about 2.25, you know, per guy. So I need to increase, you know, my amount. So if you're not good at math, you're going to get good at math from doing this. So after I went through and I hit capture... I can see my time. I'm going to hit speed up. I always speed mine up because I don't like to have it to where my guys are just doing nothing. And I try and get it around a two to three minute mark. Usually, no matter how far away something is, you can get to it within two to three minutes if you have to speed ups and up. Okay, so that is how to capture it. I think we've covered the speed ups well. We've covered it to where we're talking about like at your top bar. 
we have our lumber, we have our iron, and then we have our stone. What you want to do is build up as much of this as possible. Now, there's two ways that you can do this, right? You can have it to where you build it up in a more liquid type of form. The way that I say it's liquid is because this number goes up and down constantly. It is constantly changing. The other way is to where you'll be getting prizes from other people. So let's go to clan, gifts, and then let's open and see what we get. So for that, I got iron and a good bit of it. This one, I got food. This one, I got more iron. This one, I got speed up. This one, I got lumber. So just from your clan, you are always going to be getting different things. Other people get things from crypts or whatever. You're going to get a prize out of it every single time. Now, what you can do is use the liquid stuff. Use the stuff that's constantly going through and going up and going down in numbers. Use that stuff up first. And then you should keep a nice good stash of the stuff that you've been getting as far as, as prizes. So let's look at resources, right? I have a good bit of silver that I've been stashing on up. Now, granted, my numbers are probably bigger than most other people's and everything, so I do apologize for those of you like, oh, man, that's nice. Trust me, when you get to a high enough level, you stop even looking at this. You're just like, I hope that it's high. Like right now, I've gone through and I've done times two package on silver. Like it says a ton of silver sale. I did that and then I did the times two aspect and I got 600 million out of it. That's the reason why I have like 191 times five. So basically I have 195, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Crap, I can't do math. No, 950 million uh, silver. Sorry, 950 million silver. So I have a darn good bit of it. Food. I have never once in this entire game really used food that I've gotten as far as as prizes. So granted, like, I tried to bleed it down when it was, you know, getting ridiculous because you can only look at so many things in a list before you're like, I got to get rid of some of this. So right now I'm keeping about 108 million in food that I can have it go up, I can have it go down. And there are certain events to where you can donate to your clan. And whenever you donate resources to your clan, you get points towards this tournament or whatever. And my clan leader is like, I'd rather you wait to get the title or whatever. And I'm just like, well, that's cool. But I got about 600 million in food just sitting in this type of, you know, resource. So it's good to be able to store up things and try and have it to where you're only using the stuff that you get from other people or the stuff that you're getting from like a quarry or a lumber mill or whatever. Use that in order to upgrade your walls. Don't use the stuff that you have that's sitting behind. Either that or I had a rule to where I'm like, okay, I'll use the 3,000s, so I'll use the 5,000s. So I'll use all the way up until I get to the quarter million, the 250000. So like right about here there's my 250,000 so at this point if I wanted to I could go through and hit use and whenever you use it right you got to hit it twice because it's like are you sure you want to go through and use it and then you start clicking so let's say that I'm like okay I'm just gonna go through and make this into liquid form because I hate looking at all that in my storage and then plus, if you want to go through a round of like, you know, upgrading buildings, this is always a good way in order to basically do it. Just like store it up for a while and then have it to where as you use it, you can, uh, you know, pull it out of your items list in order to be able to use it. So I'll end up using that later in order to be able to go through and help out. And I got my iron and a huge amount of it. Not as much as I would like to and all because I had to go through and use some, but I still have a good bit of it. Like I said before in another video, if you're level six, you probably need to have a, about a hundred million in each one of the resources on hand. It's at least as far as, as items. If you're if it's the liquid form, don't worry about using it. All right, production. 
Production is basically to where you have this list. And I'm going to show you why this list is so important. So right now I have a shield of peace going on. I also have experience points, valor points, conquest points, and all these are basically double. So my XP, whenever I fight something or whenever I do a task, I'm getting double the amount of experience points that other people are getting, which is awesome. Valor points, conquest points. And if you remember from one of the other ones, like right now I have a pre-sale that I can claim. If you're like, how do I get double of the points? So if you scroll all the way to the right on the battles one and it says crush your enemy, that's where this is at. It's $4.99. It gives you it, all those for a week. And then inevitably you end up getting it from other people or whatever. But that's why these are so important is because... Now I'm stronger on average by 25%. That's awesome. My army health up 25%. Your bonuses are basically what creates a stronger army. A lot of people, they do mercs and all, but your bonuses does drastically matter. Leadership required, authority required, and dominance required are really, really super expensive. I would not recommend you doing those lightly. If you want to send one massive army and everything, you just have more people to revive afterwards. So I would uh, probably suggest that you stay away from it. Food consumption right now, I have it going down by 25% because of the fact that I have a massive army because I have too many monsters. But that's for different reasons that I have them. And eventually I'd like to get to where my farm and uh, farm production keeps up with it. Either that or I have to keep Helen in the city in order to be able to boost that. Food production's up double, um, silver production up double, lumber's up double, stone is up double, iron's up double. These are all things that are really, really easy to get in different sales, and you just start accruing them even faster than you can even believe. You're like, oh, I don't like I bought it once, and then after that, I, I didn't have to buy it ever again because it's in so many different sales packages that when you're looking at the view all for the sales, you're like, hey, this actually has a bunch of stuff in it that I could really use. All right, let's continue on our trek through all of our different resources. So that's our bonuses, right? The, you know, both the production and the bonuses. The bonuses, like this one's talking about VIP status. That's this one that I talked about in the other video where your VIP is huge. Look at these bonuses and what exactly it does. If you do not have VIP active pretty much at all times, you need to have it active. You need to be working on it. You need to be adding to it. Whenever you get a sale or whatever, it always has the parts in it that you can use to add to this. Like it, they look like crowns. So I can hit extend. Right now I have it for the next five days, but I also have it to where there's so many that I've gotten from other people or whatever as far as the triumphal chest that I don't even have to worry about it. All right, battles. This is to where you get like, you know, army strength going up. You have different levels of it. You can buy it if you have extra gold or whatever. I wouldn't suggest it. You usually get these as part of sales and also as part of like different rewards for different challenges and things like that. Food consumption down. This one I really love. Just because I like having a big army at all times. Dragon coins. Okay, dragon coins is something that if you are below the level of guard or guardsman 5, do not worry about dragon coins. You will get them from other people, and they're really super expensive to get. The way that you get dragon coins is your clan has to do well, or individual clan members do well in the different challenges. So let's say, for instance, right, because I'm going to show you guys where exactly in the challenges you can see these so right now we have a triumphal challenge we have closing the gap we also have the hell forge so for hell forge as the shop you can fight the monster if you hit go it'll show where the monster is he's right there when you're fighting the hell forge monster and i'm probably going to end up doing one video per event or whatever i might do that i might not as far as different tricks or something like that. If you want the easy version of it, 
send a bunch of mercenaries that fight either on horseback or with a spear or with a sword and then also send a lot of spearmen and a lot of riders. If you do that, you're good. That's how you beat uh, most of the epic monsters and also send Hercules. He needs the exercise. Plus, he's the best against epic monsters. Okay, so with that, though, I'll show you. With Hellforge, these are the prizes that you get as far as, like, you know, oh, you're going to get 27,000 to our uh, 200 for the individual pieces or the gold uh, coins in order to be able to buy a certain type of armor. They are really super useful. Okay, so now we have it to where we're listing on out the rankings as far as who's the top 100. And as you can see, I am not top 100. I have 10 million... 856,000 points or whatever. If I scroll all the way down. Da -da 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 -da, or I do the faster way. Dum, da -dum, dum. I am just now outside of it. See the difference in between me? Uh, I'm sorry. Actually, I'm place 100. Barely, barely in it. No, no, no. Never mind. Okay, I messed up. See, look. We have place 100 and we have 100 plus. Right now I'm at 10 million 800 and some odd thousand. The person in 100th place has 620 million points. Needless to say, I am not getting into the top 100. So let's look at the prizes, right? Because every single tournament or every single event that they have, they usually have different prizes that come with it. Whenever you're looking at ranking on you versus somebody else, it'll determine what level of prizes you're getting. If you're top 100, then you're going to get a nice prize. So for this, right, the top person is going to get 50,000 dragon coins. That's either the top person in your division or the top person in the world. Needless to say, it is not very easy. So sometimes they're inside of a kingdom Sometimes they're across the entire world. Sometimes it's to where they put you in a certain division according to your level of hero or your level of a captain or whatever. And that determines what division you're at. So for this, 50,000, you know, dragon coins, that is like for being the best, that is not that much. And then if you go further down, so like you have one gets a certain amount, two gets a little less, three gets a little less, four through six gets a little less, seven through 10 gets a little less. And then you start to get down to where, oh, you got top 100. You get 5,000 dragon coins. 5,000 dragon coins does not even buy a mon one uh, set of monsters on a level four. You cannot go to the barracks with 5,000 dragon coins for a level four monster and hope to get it. So these things are... You'll be amazed as far as what people place in. Like, if people place in a certain event in your clan and they're doing well, then you're like, yay, cool, that's awesome. And then other times it's like, guys, this isn't worth it, so don't do it. So that's Hellforge and that's Dragon Coins. Let's get back to our items. And we're almost done, don't worry. I'm trying to keep it brief. Reset Talon Points, I have, what, five of these or whatever? It's to where you can alter it around and have it to where instead of you being one way, you can have it a different way. I'm pretty happy with the way that I have my stuff. Oh, by the way, look at this. 314 of the 100,000 ones. Yeah. Give it time, guys. Don't worry. If you're in a decent clan, if you give it time, you will accrue dragon coins. And also, I did it as part of a sale. There was a times two on a dragon coin set. And I was like, yes, because I needed the gold. I didn't need anything else at the time. I was actually doing pretty well, but I needed the gold. And so I'm like, well, I could always use dragon coins because as you get to higher levels, having huge monster armies is awesome. You just have to be able to feed it. That's the hard part. Changing of your avatar. Currently, my avatar is Ulrich. He's really good for defense. But let's say that I wanted a different avatar. So we're going to try and do this this time. I know I failed at this yesterday. All right, so currently, right, let's try and see if we can switch him around.
No. That's different types of equipment for him. Not that. These are our talent points. Not that. I'll be honest with you guys. I have absolutely no idea how to get to it in this version. I like the phone version better. Oh, well. But if you want to change your avatar, I could go from, like, Ulrich to Valencia. I could go from Ulrich to Svitakor or whatever the heck his name is. I can change my name. Dragon name changer. I could give him, a, like, a pet name, like, you know, Thumpy or whatever. Or however the heck you want to do it. City teleport. This is good if you are about to get attacked or walloped by a huge, huge army. Teleport your city someplace else so that they don't kill you. It's actually really useful. This one. When the kingdom opens up, this is something that, whether or not it's myself or other people, are probably going to be using a lot of. And it's only going to be to where you need to do it once, and then hopefully you land in the right spot. Upgraded teleport to another kingdom. I can move my entire city there, and it says it can only be used once every 37 days. So if you get to a kingdom that really, really sucks, like let's say a clan is like, hey, come on over here, you know, we, we'll treat you really well, and then meanwhile they just, you know, raid and pillage you and everything else like that. That's not exactly a good fit for you. So you can go through and change out that kingdom or whatever 37 days later, but in the meantime, use a city teleporter and get the heck out of that clan. All right, so we have portals, and then we have portals to another kingdom. So you can move your character in between different kingdoms. I can't use these yet because of the fact that our kingdom is not open. Watchtower, this thing is very useful as far as going through and looking up different monsters or different resources. I already showed you earlier how exactly to use that. These legendary pinchers and, you know, rare jewel pinchers or whatever, this is for, like, gems and being able to put them into your equipment or whatever in order to be able to upgrade them. I have not really dealt with my gems yet because I haven't gotten many of them yet, so there's no point in me even going through and having a lot of them. I got these as part of other sales, and it's just like, okay, cool, I have that. I'm not really worried about it. All right, Blueprints. Blueprints are insanely expensive, and you need a lot of them in order to create anything in this. So the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys how exactly to build a resource. So let's go to my city. I usually like to click that button because what it does is it takes me back inside my city and then I just click back again, and then it'll take me right outside of it. So what you can do, right, and other people in my city have done this, like this one right here, they have their own, and like other people build dragon mounds, they build different things. So you might notice like individual things being built in different areas of the city, like that one uh, lumber mill that had a huge amount to it. See, different things. So let's say, for instance, that I wanted to build something. You do a, a left click on the computer. If it's, you know, on your phone, you just click on the tile, and then you hit build, and then you have a choice as far as what you want to use. For those of you that don't know what a mimic chest is, a mimic chest is something to where you get a really cool prize out of it, but you have to kill it only using your hero. And the only way to really do it is you put a message out to the rest of the clan. Hey, I'm going to summon a, a summon a mimic chest. Is there enough people on to fight it? See if you get at least 10 to 15 responses, and then you could go through and summon it. And then this way, after you guys kill it, everybody in the clan gets a gift. I could build a village if I really want to. That would therefore go through and help me with the amount of silver that I you know have and or need. But right now, I don't have any free captains, so I'm not going to go through it and build a village. But let's say that I did click on it. It contains silver. This one would contain 7 million silver if I went through and did it. It has a lifetime day or of 5 days, so if it's not used up within 5 days, it goes away. It goes bye-bye. And then I can click build if I want. It takes 350 blueprints in order to do it, which is expensive. 350 in uh, blueprints is basically like 3,500 in gold. 
So it does get expensive on you. So that's all about resources, guys. What I would honestly do and suggest for you guys, and I'm going to show you my house a little bit while I'm doing this. So I have a whiteboard that I like to keep as far as for different things and like, oh, I need this or oh, I need that, blah, blah, blah. So like I have, you know, phone numbers up here, whatever. So what I used to do, I would take a dry erase marker. Really? Here, let me put this down. Sorry. Okay, so I'm gonna take a dry erase marker. And what I did with my board is I would keep beside my, uh, like I would write up on the board, I would write down like silver. Let's give it a little bit more light so you guys can see. And then I would write how much I have in storage. So right now I have about 950 million. Now the reason why I do this is I will go through my phone and I'll basically be like, okay, I have this much of this, this much of that, this much of that. So then I know like if I have lumber or I have iron and then I have my stone. What I can do is I can look at my list and be like, hey, I really need more of this, or I need a little bit more of that, or I'm not ready to make that jump from level four guardsman to level five guardsman because I really don't have enough of this or that. If you can list it out and have it to where you have it nice and easy and able to see how much you have in storage, not the liquid amount that you go through and you use and it goes up and down every single day, but I'm talking about the amount that is stored away that you will not touch. And then you could be like, okay, I need to do a purchase. And you can even like list out your speed ups in all honesty, but I don't list up speed or list out speed ups because I know no matter what, any package I ever buy is already gonna have speed ups in it. So it will help me. But it might be to where I'm like, you know, hey, I need, you know, a certain type of liquid in order to help out my captains go up in level. So try and have it to where you list it out on something that you have that you can write on. And then you can alter it and then you can have it to where it's just like, okay, I need this. I need that. One last thing I realized I forgot about you with you guys. The captains have a certain liquid that they need in order to basically get their level up. So let's say Helen, right? Helen right now is level 144, but her star level is currently sitting at two. So you can go through and try and increase the level of stars on the captain. So on the computer, you would hit this, and then it has the liquid right here. This liquid, you could get this from the Doomsday Monster, the guy that has those wings that says, oh, you'll never take my chest again. When it's like, oh, am I going left or going right? Am I going to the plus 15 or the, you know, times two? Like, that guy, when you uh, are fighting that epic monster in this game, a lot of times they'll have this liquid. There's another event to, uh, that is really good for getting that. It's called Immortal Essence. Let me show you it. Okay, so Immortal Essence right here. When I fought that big, huge Hellforge guy or whatever, see all that liquid and everything that you know is used? That's what you need in order to be able to upgrade your captain from one star level to the next star level. And every single time that you do that, they have certain bonuses associated with it. So I'm going to click back into my captain for Helen and click on that. So right now, if uh, she's at a level two star, if she wants to get up to level three, it would increase. So instead of the food, the food production speed being at plus 40 percent, and that's just her bonus for the stars. That's not including her bonus for her level. So she's at 144 right now. Add in the 40% for her star level. She basically does 184% increase. 
If I was to get her to level three, it adds an, uh, it adds an additional 80% onto that because the difference between 120 and 40. So then her food production that she helps out with would be 120 plus 144. She would be at 264 percent increase in food production now here's the thing when you look at all of your different captains or whatever some of them are going to be real real useful in order to get up in level other ones are not so much so like when i'm looking at uh, ada she is great as far as as a, a fighter especially for the guardsmen she is very, very useful for most beginners all the way up to a higher level player. Now, granted, her abilities kind of get diminished because of these, like, epic level, um, or not epic level, but these legendary, the ones that are in the uh, orange background. Those guys basically make it to where Ada is not nearly as important, but she still has a place of importance. You don't get a character leveled up to, like, 170 and just ignore them. It's kind of like, hey, you still have a purpose. I can still use you. We're just going to figure out for what. All right, so I believe that that covers all of our different resources that you really need to concentrate on. Remember, find a whiteboard or some piece of paper or something that you can keep a running tally as far as what you have in storage between your different resources. Because this way, you know, hey, I'm gaining in the game or, hey, I'm regressing in the game. I'm not doing as well as I thought. Always have it to where you're progressing in the game. Increase your amount of silver. Increase your amount of food. Increase your amount of lumber. Increase everything that you possibly can. Granted, you don't have to rush it. There is no rush. You don't have to go on out and you know spend a huge amount of money. Oh, I have a chest that I haven't gone through and claimed. Oh, that was one million in silver. Yay. And then also, you know, you have your, like, you know, teleport or, um, I'm sorry, your portals that help you go from one area to the next. So review through your resources, figure out what you need, what you don't need. And if you have any other questions, you know, go through and you can uh, put a comment in this with this video. And then this way I know what to cover in the next video. Uh, you guys have a good day. I'll talk to you later. Bye.